<laughs> Welcome to the Airhorn Podcast. We don't know how long it'll last. It might be the worst. It won't be the best. It's different from raw vlogs because we got a guest. It's the Airhorn. Airhorn Podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> first take first take i just made that up as i was going along not really mm -hmm. <laughs> um so as i said welcome to the air horn podcast it is different from the raw vlogs because we have a guest in the house that's how air horn podcasts work um this is katie if you don't already know we're gonna get into her introduction in just uh in just a second um but if you're unfamiliar with this channel, this is the Airhorn channel. It is my companion channel to my main uh, MTB Allen channel. So check that link in the corner to check out that channel. Um, podcasts, raw vlogs, talky stuff. But we do focus on mountain biking. So Airhorn podcast episode one. Actually, let me talk about that real quick. Airhorn episode one kind of three because technically we had an interview with matt palmer and tony from the outsider mtb channel which katie knows hey katie give me, give me a high five <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um anyway uh and those were those were technically the first two episodes of the airhorn podcast but i really hadn't figured it out yet in any case let's not keep katie waiting around who this? This, folks, is Katie. If you don't know who Katie is, um, Katie's been featured in a couple of my uh, previous episodes. Uh, you might recognize her from the time uh, from the from the Turtle Trouble uh, episode where uh, the Kelly and Katie <laughs> ended up on a trail, and Katie was like, "And Katie, <laughs> Katie, wait, hang on." Katie was saying, I was so mad. She, she was so mad. And at this point she was saying like, why, why wouldn't they tell anybody that the trails are <laughs> trails are closed. But then later this happened and she was like, oh, wait, <laughs> the trails are closed. Um, and then later on, they ended up on, on miracle mile. And when they were on miracle mile, uh, uh, it was pretty awesome because Katie had, had, had never ridden a black diamond trail at snow summit before and braved it. And there was a lot of craziness that happened. And you may uh, know her from the heat time that she, wait, let me get to it real quick. I'm sorry. I'm, this is a bunch of dead air right now, but she's like, <laughs> this is Kelly. And then Katie, uh, Decided to take my bike. I really just kind of want to show you this clip. And <laughs> this is my bike. Throw it down the There mountain. it is. <laughs> my bike is over here. <laughs> uh, but that being said, uh, more recently, you know, she, we were up at Oaks and, you know, Katie was really progressing and has really come a long way. And this is like a clip of her uh, coming down shoots at Oaks. And I have to say, we've been back since and she goes down uh, that the shoots uh, or the, the waterfall it shoots way faster now on her new bike, which we'll talk about in just a second. <laughs> Yay. So that's Katie. That's our introduction to Katie. Uh, I don't know how good of an introduction that was. Um, but uh, is there anything you want to say about yourself before we get into your stuff? No. Okay. <laughs> Um, the reason why I wanted to bring Katie on is because as I was telling Katie earlier, she's at a point now where she's, um, a bit past the kind of beginner stage of mountain biking where she's, um, uh, graduated from her first bike. She's gaining confidence. She's moving on to, uh, gnarlier and gnarlier terrain and just becoming generally more confident. And I figured like, it's a really good time to like talk to somebody like Katie for those of you who are maybe still new. And for those of you to kind of remember what it's like to have been in that position. Um, but in, in a way to introduce Katie, we're going to just jump into three milestones. So Katie, nice. tell me about three milestones in your mountain biking life? Um, 
Mine are kind of weird. <laughs> I don't know. That's, that's um, great. <laughs> okay. Well, one of them that I thought about just being new to Southern California was the time that we were up at Summit and I got totally annihilated by the sun. <laughs> and <laughs> it was like, welcome to Southern California, like from Seattle, no base tan, no nothing. I peeled like twice. And that was the start of my tan bands. <laughs> tan bands. <laughs> yeah, so actually that's that's the thing to know about Katie is you you are originally from uh all over the place, but I grew up in Florida. Okay, grew up in Florida. <laughs> Why'd you make me say that to the internet? Not everyone knows I'm from Florida. <laughs> <laughs> it exp it explains a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but Florida, and then you were in, um, Seattle, I think for a while you were in Thailand though, right? Yep. Yeah. Thailand Spent some time. Seattle. And then Seattle and then California. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. So milestone one, getting sunburned and developing tan bands. <laughs> um, number, well, I kind of have like four, two of them are kind of silly. Cool. Uh, Number two, going tubeless, <laughs> which I feel like I should have done immediately, obviously. <laughs> I wish I had footage of that. <laughs> I was like just, grunting and about growling. It. <laughs> yeah, yeah, tell us really about bad. it. Oh, like trying to get the tires on? Yeah, it was, it was, uh, we were trying to get them on in Alan's garage and just we were like, grunting and panting and like <laughs> trying to hold the wheel and the tire on from like three angles like hoping that it'll like, pop out like it was it took a few tries <laughs> a lot of tries yeah yeah uh, but it was it was it was the most magical <laughs> like tireless conversion i've ever experienced because the bead was so wrinkly it was nowhere <laughs> yeah. near the rim but at one point we got so frustrated, we were just putting air in and just beating on the tire <laughs> and wiggling it and beating it. And at some point it just worked. It just, it just did popped. it, yeah. It was, in, it was incredible, that was. Yeah, that moment. Yeah, it was <sighs> unbelievable. So that's number two. Mm -hmm. um, well, I was actually gonna mention the Miracle Mile day and just going through a whole season at Summit without dying. <laughs> And that being like, I was like a month and a half in and started riding Summit. And uh, they're like really good, really good um, beginner trails so Beginner yeah. trails there, Be like going green and, and turtle and stuff. But, and um, you were riding a Yelly Screamy, right? Yep, Canfield Brothers, Yelly Screamy, yeah. Red Tail. Canfield, right. 29er, mm -hmm. yeah, on Miracle yeah. Mile. Anybody yeah. just let that let that sink in, everybody. Well, actually, I was on your bike on Miracle Mile, but oh, that's right, you were on my bike. Okay, never mind. Yeah, still, it <laughs> but was, for the you, rest you, of it, yeah. And I'm just so happy that I waited until the end of the season to ride full squish because I was like, oh my god, <laughs> this is yeah. so much easier. Why am I on oh, hard tails? Is that your? Is that another milestone? Yeah, that was going to be my last milestone. Was just getting a new bike, going, okay. going full squish. Got it. Was there Which one? Which was in uh, two months ago. Yeah. Yeah, two months like, ago. God, was it? It was. It was mid. It was not recently. Or yeah. early February. Yeah. And what'd you get? I got a Santa Cruz Nomad. <laughs> Santa Cruz Nomad. So why didn't you go with the um, with the Juliana? Uh, cause, well, the Santa Cruz's are way cooler, <laughs> first of all, um, as with a lot of gear aimed towards women in the mountain biking industry, I think. Mm. Uh, I mean, the Julianas are, are better than they used to be, I think, but also my Nomad was the last one in my size on the floor and yeah. it was a surprise buy, actually. I went in thinking... That I was gonna get a Kona and like was set on it and uh, walked in and I was like just cruising around and um, saw saw the Nomad night 
they didn't have a price tag on it. And, um, and, but I noticed it was the alloy and I was like, oh my God, maybe I can afford this. <laughs> and uh, I was like, what's up with this bike? What size is it? And what, how much is it? Like, tell me everything. And he was like, oh, it's actually a large and it's like the last one. It's like last year's model. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? This is a bike that I'm like <laughs> rolling over. So duh. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. So a little bit of background. Uh, Katie had been wanting a Santa Cruz Bronson or Nomad and like just drooling over it, but it was hard to find one in, in the, in the right price range. Right. And you were, you were looking at Jensen, right? I think you went to Jensen and it wasn't on their site. And so you had decided on the, was the process, right? And what did you yeah, say? It was? Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was the process 153. Yeah. The process um, 153. And yeah, they don't have them on there cause it's only like in store pickup, like local. Pickup yeah. And ship them, yeah. So they don't put them up. And I was like, yeah. So, so you had like you had like settled for a one fifty three. Not that nothing wrong with the Kona process one fifty three, but you really wanted the no. Honestly, I so. don't need a one seventy. <laughs> Probably, <laughs> I just wanted it. It's true. <laughs> it's it seems to treat you well. Cool. So yeah, it's wonderful. I love that bike. Cool. So what is your what if you wanted to have a next milestone? What would it be? Um, one thing I want to do in general is just actually start practicing skills outside of going on rides. Mm. Um, because I tend to just go out on the weekends and get like super stoked and just like go full at it and like, <laughs> which isn't a great idea all the time. <laughs> so good, yeah. I just want to, yeah, just be better about practicing and like, I guess my next milestone that I would like to happen is to start getting off the air without uh, like losing my pedals or like doing stupid stuff. Get, what did you say? You're, you want to get in the air. I want to start. Oh, get yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's fun and scary, dangerous stuff. That's yeah. so good. Heck yeah. <laughs> um, so then moving on to the next one is like, do you, can you talk about a recent or long time ago remarkable ride? Uh, we had so many good days at Summit that I was just thinking about and I was like, I can't even remember a specific day or anything really because you and Kelly are the only people that I ride with, <laughs> number one. <laughs> So it's like same company all the time. Yeah. But also we just had so many good days up there and like I don't know, last summer was amazing. Just I love Snow Summit. But um a recent one that I had a great, great time was my first time this year at Greer with you and Tony and Kelly. Mm. Had that was awesome. Such a good day that day. I don't know what it was. I just felt good in my body and on my bike. Um, maybe it was Were because, what? No, go ahead. Just like reminiscing the, the first time that I was at Greer <laughs> compared yeah. to that time. <laughs> Do you want to talk about that? Um, we, we don't have to go into detail. <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> yeah, I guess. I was with Wheelie Bro, uh -huh. <laughs> the, this person that I didn't know at all, really. Um, it was my first inaugural ride on my Yelly Screamy in Southern California. Um, I showed up like clipped in, no pads, no drop seat, no nothing. And this person that I was with just was, uh, I, I don't know. Un just un un unaccommodating. <laughs> yeah, that's a good word. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And but so then when we Alan went back, and Kelly scooped me up and saved me and brought Aww. me back into mountain biking. Yay. Yeah, that's a, I'll tell a little story. Like, that's like when, when Katie and I met, like, we were just kind of chatting and, and she mentioned, um, that she had been taken mountain biking and she re like related the story to me and I felt so bad. I was like, <laughs> can I 
please allow me to reintroduce you to mountain biking. Um, and then we, I think we went to Santiago Oaks the first time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. But um, yeah, cool. Um, and the, when we went back to Greer, or when you went back to Greer, were you on the Nomad then? Or, you know, no, you, the first time you went back, you were still on the Yelly Screamy. Still on the Yelly Screamy. My first ride on the Nomad was at Greer, though. That's true. With the Antoni. Yeah. Which was an interesting day. I was just like so excited about the new bike. And then I like was feeling so crazy on it. I was like, why? I just want to like rip on my new bike, but I felt crazy. <laughs> Isn't that funny how like new bike day, first ride day is almost kind of like the worst? Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't prepared for that. That was my first like new bike day <laughs> for mountain yeah. biking. So that's funny. Yeah. Uh, cool. So uh so then what would you say is like one place that a mountain biker has to go ride or maybe it doesn't have to be that it can be a, a place that you really want to go ride i was gonna say i've only like probably done like six <laughs> trails huh. and bikes around here um well tony kind of hit it last time uh i always just think of whistler yeah um but i'd really like to go just back up to seattle i didn't have a car when i lived there um, and I didn't, I had this like old clunky mountain, but I didn't really, I wasn't really mountain biking when I was living there. Um, but there's, there are a lot of good trails out there in like Bellingham mainly. I would love to go to Bellingham. So yeah. gorgeous and a lot of good trails or like a Moab and Sedona. I don't know, like everywhere, everywhere. Let's just, yeah. let's just <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> yes. Yes. We need to make a bunch of road trips once this, all this craziness <laughs> clears up yeah yeah um all right cool so let's jump into um you know just why we're here you know we want to get to know katie and i think if you wouldn't you would you mind just kind of like talking a little bit about um your experiences like starting out you know like learning your bike learning new trails like finding the limits of your bike learning skills, that all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like, well, um, go ahead. I'm trying to think my first few rides, I think we went to Oaks like three times. Yeah. And then kind of like, I'm trying to just like put myself back in that mindset hmm. of like, that was almost exactly a year ago. Wow. It was end of April yeah. last year. That's crazy. So, yeah. So that you've had some rough experiences coming into mountain biking where you had like uh, maybe a character who like made it a little bit hard to come in. You had had some crashes. I know when we went to Oaks, you, uh, you got dinged up, but like you kept coming <laughs> back, you know, like what's, what brought you back? I just love bikes and uh, good company. <laughs> I, <think. laughs> I mean, I think that, well, I've, I've been like in love with bikes for forever. I started riding, I mean, I rode when I was little, but I really got back into it in college. Um, I had a fixed gear and I was like all up in the alley cat scene doing that mm. kind of stuff and just like ripping around and, um, and then played bike polo for a long time. Um, and I think the, the special thing about mountain biking for me right now is that I, I, I played volleyball for 10 years year round. I played in college. Um, and after I quit that, I like kind of felt this void for a while where I was like, who am I? Like, what mm -hmm. do I do? You know, going, I was training and playing like five to seven hours a day or something crazy like that. And then, um, so I, I got into bikes and I just made so many good friends um, in the bike scene. And I have continued to do that, like everywhere that I've lived in the world and all over the States. And um, I just feel like most, most bike people are, are cool people, <laughs> especially yeah. mountain biking though. And like, I think that was really special for me, like getting into it. I mean, when after our first ride, I think we just like kept riding every weekend for like the rest of time. Yeah, like, we didn't really take a break, and like I just fell in love with Kelly and with you and like 
our friendship took off and we were also like good riding buds and like it was just so fun to spend our time outside and exploring Southern California and all the beauty that is here and it's just biking is such a good way to get out there and to see a lot of stuff and um and mountain biking is especially special because I think you there's a lot of adrenaline that goes into it and yeah. uh, I sort of thrive on that too so yeah yeah what uh what trail would you say has given you the most adrenaline shots miracle mile <laughs> I was like when I was like re-listening to the audio from that uh GoPro clip Right. I, I felt like I could like hear my heartbeat. I mean, because I had experienced it, but it was just like. <laughs> well, also because there were just so many people yeah. on the trail, and like I would like go weekend. down and just be like, "Fuck, somebody's gonna come around the corner, and like <laughs> I'm gonna fuck somebody up, or I'm gonna get fucked up," you know? And I was just right. like, "Oh my god, this is crazy." <laughs> um, but yeah, and that, it was just especially weird because it was our. Um, that was our warm up lap. We were just like on Miracle Mile, and I had never ridden a black diamond. <laughs> like, yeah, all right, so, let's fucking go. It's, so, like, yeah, like a little background for those who haven't seen that uh, episode. Uh, it was closing weekend, or was it the weekend before? Or was mm -hmm. it closing? Yeah, it was, it was cl closing weekend. Um, the chair, the lift line was crazy long because only one lift was open and um, they had already closed down Turtle, but Katie and Kelly hadn't noticed that. And ended up on turtle and then because they couldn't ride the rest of it had to take the turn off on to miracle mile katie has never ridden miracle mile and i think like you had maybe ridden party wave west ridge like once or twice and that was katie. my first time on your bike i was like new and, bike new yeah. trail, <laughs> first run and a, and, a, and and a size too small the bike was like too small i think for you and yeah. uh and like suddenly it was like you were thrown into the bottom half of of, of miracle mile <laughs> that was definitely the most adrenaline yeah yeah and um, i should say i i did a lot of editing in that video and i did cut out a lot of the sections of katie riding and you did handle a fair bit of it like really well that bottom half um just for like storytelling it was hard to like cut in a lot of those pieces um because mm -hmm. i had like kelly's footage and your footage and it was hard to like dis distinguish between the two but yeah you, you did handle that trail really well <laughs> Other than that, though, I, I would say probably the waterfall and shoots. It was like the most adrenaline I had with, with that day with you and Tony. And I was like, um, I knew I was going to do it. And I just kept going up and down and being like, I think I need to look at it again. <laughs> you're like, you just do it. <laughs> like, go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you, you had seen it. You'd been, we'd been there. Like you, we'd said earlier, like we went there a number of times. You'd been looking at that feature for a long time. Um, so yeah, and for a while I would just be like, no, I just don't, I'm not going to do it. And so I just, yeah. I didn't even think about it. And then I guess that, I don't know what changed that day. I was just like, I'm going to, I think y'all were both like, this is like Greer, but just all together. Yeah. I think that's, that's this. interesting because you had ridden Greer that had like, not the same kind of thing, but similar things in maybe smaller packages. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and then you were able to take that to the waterfall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then you did crash the first time you tried it. Yeah. I mean, I was like on my front brake, like, dink -a -dink -a -dink. <laughs> like going down. It was, I wouldn't really call it a crash. I like, fell over yeah it was pretty we were scared <laughs> we were scared yeah um but then you went back up yes. like what happened there like because you because you went from like scared to even try it and then you crashed and then you were just like i'm gonna go do it again like what happened what was going on in your brain there well i was going so slow that i mean i i knew that if I was smart about how I was breaking and my line that I wasn't, I couldn't have like really hurt myself that bad, mm. probably, you know, and I, I had already like kind of like seen what it was. And I was like, this is not, I'm, I'm, I was making so much more of a big deal about it in my head than it was. Mm. 
And like when we went last weekend, I was thinking the same thing. I was like, what? I can't believe like that this was like that big of a deal to me. You know, it's, but I, and I also, I was also on a hard tail, which it was like different, yeah. which I think, I think my fork is like 140 millimeters or something. Now I have like 170 front and back. It's like yeah. definitely easier to ride it now, but also. And the yeah. geometry too. Yeah. The geometry on the, on your jelly screamy is built to throw you over the handlebars. <laughs> <laughs> when it gets steep, it just ejects you. Which I did plenty of times before yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. But what were you saying though? Like we were there. So we were there. La- was it last Friday? Last Friday we were there. And yeah. you were talking about like the difference because you did it like once and then you did it again. And you were like talking about the difference between like the first and second time you did it. Of uh, the day On, or the day. like the separate times. No, that day. Like we, I think you did it like two times. Did it? You filmed me twice and then we did a full pull. So did it yeah. Yeah. Um, just going faster was way fucking easier. Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is supposed to be a raw. I was trying yes, to stop. It's, it's thinking if you want to go ahead. It um, it's it's just way easier going faster, which I think to someone starting out is counterintuitive. You know, it's like no, I need to chill and like feel this out, and it's like no, you're you you feel way less if you just go fast. <laughs> like, yeah. And your suspension handles everything better if you're not breaking. <laughs> like, just go. Right. So. Yeah, yeah, it's funny how that works. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that Yeah, I feel like that ride was, in a way, a milestone in, hmm. in itself. Just being like, just getting to know my bike more. Because it's, yeah, been two months and we haven't been riding as much as I'd like to because yeah. of the, everything. But. Yeah. It's funny that that was a bit of a milestone for me as well that day because like I started feeling not back to where I was but like similar like I was starting to ride that trail a little bit closer to how, how I'd been riding it before I broke my wrist and that mm. like that felt, that felt pretty good. Um, yeah. Because uh, it's pretty chonky, wasn't it? Like you're you're feeling it. Yeah, like I always forget how, like, you know, the waterfall is like one thing, but the whole bottom section of that trail, yeah. it's like all the breaking bumps is just like crazy chunky and just, mm-hmm. you know, but it was still doing okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, one thing I did kind of want to uh, talk about, if you have anything in particular to say about it, is like, do you feel... Um, there's anything in particular about being a woman coming into mountain biking that that has struck you positive negative i will say the best and the worst part about being a woman in mountain biking and maybe in general is just the constant underestimation <laughs> <laughs> yeah um but i mean i think the like i was saying before the biggest bummer for me is like the gear, <laughs> like the whole like pink it and shrink it attitude. It's like, no, dude, I don't want to wear fucking pink. I'm wearing like camo and black, <laughs> not pink. <laughs> yeah, you purple. know, and like, I don't know. Yeah, that whole that whole part of it, and then. Uh, let's see. I wrote some notes. I'll see if I put anything else. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't really have anything else. I do. It, I don't know. I don't get hit on as much now, I think because of the, maybe the shaved head, hmm. um, and my attitude, <laughs> but actually <laughs> I don't really get hit on that much when I'm with you. Um, I did, it was funny, like the few times that Kelly and I would just go by ourselves, it was just like automatic, mm. you know? It was just like, like it's just annoying. Happened. Just like, I don't know, people just being like overly friendly and weird. And yeah. like, like I had this one dude, I uh, got a flat on i can't remember like turtle maybe or going green and he uh i didn't have a like 
CO2 or anything like that. And he like helped me get back up and running. And like, I ended up getting a nail through my tire, like towards the bottom, right? That was, that was after, right? Right. Mm. So he like helped me the first run. And then he like insisted on riding the lift with me, like up and like riding the next trail because he just like wanted to make, make sure that I was going to be okay. And I was like, right. no, <laughs> Bro. I'm fine. Yeah. yeah. Like we're in a park too. Like I'll just walk. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like we're like far yeah. from civilization or anything. Right. I don't know. Just like weird stuff like that. Um, but yeah. And like going, <laughs> this has happened like multiple times to me where I'll, I don't know that much about bikes, but I know enough about bikes to get me in trouble, I guess. And mm. I would like go in and be to a shop and be like, Hey, um, this is what's wrong with my bike. This is what it's doing. You know, I'm pretty sure this is what's up. And they'd be like, okay. And like, take it back <laughs> and like fuck around with it. And then they bring it b- back out and like, say like, Oh, well we think like, this is what's wrong. And it was like the exact same thing that I said when I brought it in. <laughs> Yeah. Like, are you listening to me at all? Like, it just, I don't know. Just like weird stuff like that. But I mean, honestly, it's, I feel like mount, the mountain biking community is pretty awesome in general. Yeah. Um, I can't really complain too much other than like a few like weird experiences I've had. So, yeah. <laughs> For the most part, I would say people are pretty cool. Yeah, that's not cool. Is there like something you would say to uh, to a woman who's thinking about getting into mountain biking? Uh, I think it's really great if you have a buddy that you can ride with. It's really nice. Um, just because I don't know, like shared memories are are nice too, on top of everything. But. Um, yeah, and just like, I don't know. I don't know what I would say. Just if if you love it, just like keep doing it. And it, you know, it takes, I feel like mountain, book, my mountain biking took me longer than other sports or physical things to get better at. Yeah. Yeah. I can agree with that. Although I'm kind of old coming into it. So old man. <laughs> I'm looking, trying to learn something new but uh i mean i'm an old lady oh, so old. i am 30 <laughs> 30 <laughs> <laughs> i know i have to let you go soon so you can take your metamucil <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah if you could rock it up yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do i need to yeah, i know get my yeah, give me some lighting. light yeah, it's like it's kind of uh, weird in there. Oh no, I had just bring her thing in and it's not turning on. Oh, there we go. Is there we go. That's better. Whoa. Oh, I'm so sweaty. Look at that. It's hot today. <laughs> yeah, I guess it got up like to like 92 or something. No. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Means the mountains will be good soon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, cool. This has been cool. I I like this. This it's weird. This is we actually kind of just everybody will know. Like Katie and I usually just when we hang out, we just act like twelve year old boys and <laughs> make fart, fart noises and <laughs> be stupid. So we're trying to be kind of serious right now. <laughs> uh, yeah. Do you want to do the ex- exit exam? Yes. You, is- yes. Okay. Cool. Or what? Do you want to talk about anything else? I don't know. I could. I can talk about all kinds of you stuff. You can talk all the all night. Yeah, because because I like bikes and I like to talk about bikes. Um. Well, heck, how about this? Before we get into the exit exam. Well, heck. Um, well, heck. Well, shoot, dang. Um. <laughs> what's what do you like about your Santa Cruz Bronson Nomad? <laughs> uh. Well, it's pretty orange it's orange it's orange and black um it well just going from my last bike <laughs> mm-hmm. 
<laughs> I mean, as you know, I'd be going down the trail and they would just be like, clunk, 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 clunk. and I'd be like, what is that noise or that other noise? Like, I have no idea. <laughs> like, uh, this thing could fucking fall apart at any moment. <laughs> no idea what's going on here. And this bike is just so quiet and clean and mm. the climbing's pretty good. That's one thing that's really nice. My uh, Yelly Screamy was, uh, my back cog was like way, way smaller. I have like a big granny gear. Yeah. Um, you always had like a, like a hard gear to, to pedal up. We'd always like, we'd be like on our Eagle cassettes and Katie would be like, yeah, y'all be like, go ahead. And I was like, okay, I can't stop. Or like, yeah. <laughs> I'm not getting back on. The right. bike. Um, uh, yeah, so cool. that, that's super nice, the climbing, but it is uh, like double the weight of that other bike. So I, yeah. I feel it in other ways, but I did notice like that last, um, Oaks climb. We did Oaks one time on the Yelly Screamy like this year, 2020, before mm -hmm. before I got the Nomad. And I remember it being like as gnarly as the first time. And the first time I was like, maybe I'm just not in good shape or whatever. You were, you were hung over that time though. I was, I was pretty hungry. <laughs> so that might have had something to do with it. Um, but yeah. I remember it being like significantly harder and then yeah. I did it like in January and I was like, no, this is still hard. <laughs> yeah. I always forget and how then, hard it is. You yeah, did fine though. I'm a nomad. When we went uh, last week, you did. Yeah. It's, it, I think it's, prison. it was easier to just push more weight with like an easier gear than to like yeah. fly up it. It's true. Um, Leverage. But yeah. Yeah. The climbing's nice and it just, yeah, it took me, a few weeks to get used to it. Um, just the handling's different. It's 27.5, going down from a 29er. It's heavier, yeah. so it picks up speed like way faster, <laughs> like slingshots yeah. me out of turns. Hmm. I just have to be more conscientious, conscientious about my braking and like just different things because it just handles like so different. Yeah. But yeah, it's just, it's so fun to, I think, I honestly kind of think everyone should start out on a hardtail. Um, Why is that? Because it forces you to be really choosy about your lines and um, and I I think that that is like I don't think I would have done that. I don't think I would have been as mm -hmm. considerate about that kind of thing if I just had like a full squish and I could like now I just feel like I can like run over stuff just monster mm -hmm. truck everything yeah yeah, yeah i have but, footage of, i have footage of you going through rock gardens at greer on your 29er hardtail xc bike and it's pretty impressive like you know you picking the right line and also just using your legs for suspension like yeah i think that's important to learn i can i can still get better at using my legs yep <laughs> That's the thing. I'm always yelling at Katie about, get your butt down. Get your butt down. Get, get your butt down. down. Cool. Yep. All right. Well, let's do the exit exam. Yeah. All right. Exit exam. Do you want All right, to explain so the, it? Uh, the exit exam is mountain biking. The imaginary organization in charge of mountain biking has asked you, Katie, to help write the mountain biker license exam. Ah. What are three questions that must be included on the test? Go. Number one, do you ride with a loudspeaker or <laughs> with headphones that are so loud that you can't hear other people? If yes, automatic fail. <laughs> uh, I'm sensing some history. <laughs> Okay, cool. cool. Yeah, I have to. I have to write that you should provide the answers. Yes, and please provide the answers. Okay, cool. So the answer for that one is no, right? In order to pass. Yes. Okay. Um, number two, I think I I would like to throw just some etiquette stuff in there because I think on some days, some of the biggest bummers are like people just being mean mm. or like being a bummer like you know 
Um, so my one that I think is just like pretty entry level, just a thing to be considered about is it would be, my question would be, if you're being approached by a faster rider, what do you do? Mm -hmm. And then a, a sort of a double question. If you are approaching a slower rider in front of you, what, what do you do? And it's a, it would be like a, a written question. Right. And like an essay. Person, yeah. And if the person is considerate, then they can be a mountain biker. <laughs> All right, cool. I like it. This is good. Uh, That's like, that was one thing that like, I feel like came, if you ask anyone that plays bike polo, what's the number one rule of bike polo? It's don't be a dick. Uh -huh. And I feel like that's just should be a general life rule, but right. something that you should just, yeah, just be conscientious. Yeah. People. I, I, I think that's a that's a huge thing because it affects just new people getting into mountain biking. For um, sure. We do you and I were talking about how both you and Kelly have experienced so much like tension or, or uh, f fear while riding something like Miracle Mile because of the fear of people coming up behind you. And uh, I, was, yeah. I was actually talking to somebody else about that too, but it's been a it's been a it's like a common thing. It's like they want like you want to get better at these at these trails like Miracle Mile, and and the the one thing that's keeping you off the trail is the other people, um, coming coming down on you hard, and that's like, that's yeah. Sucks. My my day at Miracle Mile was actually really great. Um, most I think people for the most part were just like stoked to be out there for their last day and yeah, whatever. But that is like one thing for me being sort of a noob is like. And kind of the reason why I only did like one or two yeah. runs on Party Wave is uh, not that I like didn't love that trail. Like I had a good time. Mm -hmm. I wasn't like really shredding it or like jumping a bunch, but it was still really fun for me. But like I just didn't want to hold other people up, you know. Yeah. And like yeah. it is, but I, on a, on the other hand, I have felt that I've been in the other position too, mm -hmm. being like, "Fuck, I just." Want to get this PR, dude? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Empathy um, for both sides. Yeah, yeah. Um, Actually, it was, it was Donna Ellsworth who had told me that, like, she had had some anxiety about riding Miracle, and this is Donna Ellsworth, you know, and she's having anxiety about riding that trail, you know. Yeah, yeah. Especially, some it gets so like packed out, you know. Yeah. And it's like. So what's. Hmm. Yeah. So what's question three? Question three. Oh, I think there should be a field test. Um, <laughs> okay. What's what's involved in this field test? Uh, well, this is mainly for, I guess, more for people that are mountain biking, not at bike parks. But I think people should like be able to change a flat mm. and do like very basic bike maintenance so that they don't get stranded and don't have like a, I think something like, something like that could like totally like ruin your experience of mountain biking. You're just not prepared for like what you're getting into. So just yeah. like basic preparation and skills. That's stuff cool. Like that. That's solid. <laughs> That's really solid. I like the field test. <laughs> Should change it to like, you got to do a field test. Cool. Katie, this has been awesome. Alan, I had fun. Oh, Thanks for yeah. having me. Yeah, I've known you for a while and I've like learned some new things about you. That's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, so everybody, uh, I hope you dug this little chat with Katie and learning about her and her experience. Um, if you dug it, Katie, do you have anything you want to say? Any like little parting words? I always forget to do that. Nope. Nope. Okay. Nope. Um, if you dug hit it, hit the subscribe the button. Subscribe button, thanks. Hit the, yeah, like, you're on the, button. Button. <laughs> Hit the like button. <laughs> do the point. <laughs> do the uh, thing. Do the stuff. Uh, and this stuff will show up in your feed. Um, thanks, everybody. Thank you, Katie, so much for taking the time in your busy life. <laughs> I'm so busy right now. Yeah. Busy um, cool. playing with the puppy. Yeah, we didn't see the puppy. Just gotta get back to the puppy.
<laughs> I locked her out because she uh she's been a big whiner and barker today. So yeah. All right, we're gonna sign off. Everybody, thank you. We will see you next week. Later. <laughs>